to readings engineers file here and in this video i will be reviewing dead space remake the recreation of the og survival horror or should i say action horror experience that came out in 2008 and now re released on the 27th of january 2023 this remake stands as probably one of the two best remakes of all time in my opinion alongside the incredible 2002 if i am not mistaken recreation of the original resident evil a project that redefined what that original experience was all about and improved on every single aspect so with resident evil 4 on the horizon that is the remake and the callisto protocol just a couple of months back how does this project this game fare in comparison to the competition I'm happy to share with you that it blew me away. As we always do in Honest AF Reviews, this is just the opening part of the game. There will be no spoilers, no subtitles, so you don't catch anything by mistake. And everything shown here is pretty much shown in trailers, not to mention that this is a remake. So people who come here interested in whether or not they should invest once again in this game won't be spoilable because they know what's happening the rest of you do not worry you won't see anything that hasn't already been disclosed during the promotional process dead space is an action horror game where you control isaac clark this mysterious head on the left side of your monitor in dead space remake isaac is a person he's a voiced protagonist who actually has things to say Whilst in the OG creation, Isaac was a mute protagonist who was just huffing, breathing and screaming whenever something happened to him or he traversed the environment. There are a couple of things to be said about this, but I will first go into the technical details of the game and then we'll come back to the nuanced parts because we need to get the broad strokes out of the way. Dead Space Remake is one of the most beautiful games you can play right now the texture work the optimization the lightning and the particle effects around you will leave you just dumbstruck the work done here is so precise it's so competent that i was able to run the game on dlss balanced ultra 2k resolution on a 3070 ti graphics card if you compare this to what striking distance gave us a couple of months back that train wreck called the callisto protocol the comparison is like putting mars against the sun and asking the question which one is the bigger celestial body it just blows the performance aspect of that game out of the water is it as impressive when it comes to specific assets i would say no but it doesn't matter because it is impressive enough and when i say impressive enough we're talking about a 100 percent current gen title to leave you speechless everything done has huge attention to detail diverted towards it every shot you take on an enemy necromorph peels off layers of skin and flesh exposes bone splatters the area with blood everything happening in real time and the game rarely skips a bit the only hiccups we will encounter is the tiny loading intervals while running down corridors or opening doors and that doesn't even matter realistically because if you take a fraction of a second to load something instead of having me crawl in a vent for two seconds every 30 minutes or even less for that matter it's totally fine so graphically as you can see from the footage here the game is jaw dropping i had to turn off hdr to present you the cleanest possible image because of the youtube compression but man it is amazing it just looks fun 
fantastic and runs like a dream. I didn't want to put the FPS counter at the top right here to flex, but trust me, this is deep in the 100 somethings right now. So the graphics are amazing, and so is the sound. The sound in this game is out of this world. Precision in the environment and design, you always understand where something's coming from. The necromorph sounds, the weapon sounds, the amazing tools that you have at your disposal. Isaac stomp as he crushes the bodies to get the items to drop. Voice acting, chef's kiss all the way. There is just one line of dialogue later on in the game by a very disposable character that sounds a little gung-ho, kind of stupid in the setting, but doesn't really matter because it doesn't play a big role in the proceedings. It is really, really simple stuff. Stuff that moves produces very impressive results. The stuff that shouldn't move though is the icing on the cake. The sounds coming from the machinery around you, the malfunctions, the little explosions, the metal grinding on metal. One of the most impressive and filled to the brim soundscapes you will encounter in this generation. And considering that now we have Atmos and very competent virtual surround algorithms to work with, a pair of headsets will take you a long way towards enjoying Dead Space Remake. I highly recommend you use a good headset with simulated surround. I'll take you to the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay now. This over-the-shoulder camera that became prominent with Splinter Cell and Resident Evil 4 back in the game day kind of became a curse upon the industry. Playing God of War Ragnarok recently and having to face three bosses at the same time whilst the camera was hanging below my ear and half of my screen was Kratos' back was a nightmare, made me very angry and made me question what the hell they were thinking. But here, lo and behold, the perfect balance between the distance of the character in relation to the camera and the detail presented on the character himself. So you get the fidelity, you get the wow factor, you get the detail, but you don't miss out on the playability. And because this is an interactive media, you want the interaction with it to be enjoyable. You don't want to suffer in every step of the way just to, I don't know, flush more of what you've done on the character's body on the screen to get people to drool for the shinies. I don't even want to compare to the Callisto Protocol because the Callisto Protocol was so botched when it came to how it managed its field of view character weight and overall feel that it's it's not even a comparison that can be made. It makes me really sad what happened to Glenn Schofield and Striking Distance because Dead Space is his brainchild. If you watch his back in the day interviews about the difficulties of creating the original Dead Space for 7th gen consoles, they went through a lot of trouble to create that masterpiece. They went to enormous issues with memory management and that tentacle instance they really put their souls in it and created something amazing and then expanded on the lore with dead space 2 and created a universe that actually had a lot to say sadly we were dealing with ea back then and uh, still are so they kind of shut them down because they didn't meet their bottom line after the third installment now it seems that Motive is getting a little bit more leeway. It's an in-house studio of EAs. And uh, rumor has it that they are already getting ready to start producing Dead Space 2 Remake. Which is, in my humble opinion, the best in the series. So if they do as good a job with the sequel, we're in for a treat. So gameplay 
always give you the feeling that you are in control, you can deliberately chop off the limbs of the enemies, use your environment to smash them with objects, sharpies and all that good stuff and it never makes you experience that sense of heaviness beyond controllability. Isaac has weight to him, but it's not the kind of weight that you will see in other games where you feel like you're slogging. He's a armor dancer, let's say, in the environment. And that balance is very, very difficult to achieve. Grace and precision, whilst always feeling like a person carrying a hundred kilos of armored suit on him. Exceptional stuff. Now, for the more nuanced parts of the game, what's added here is an access system that allows you to loot specific places and containers. You have to collect some items to get master access. And side missions that explain some aspects of the world. And that, I think, is the best thing they did because when you have the rest of the mythology that followed Dead Space 1, you need to set it up incrementally from the first game this time around, so the people who come here for the first time will know where this is leading to a certain extent, and the people who are coming back will be able to understand what exactly ended up being the deal with the whole mythology of Dead Space. So they did a really good job with these missions, not many of them, they don't really take you out of your way, totally optional of course, and they reward you with some good stuff and some good lore. As for Isaac's representation this time around, he's a person, he's not a medium for the player to project themselves onto. And this is where Dead Space 2 took the series and Dead Space 3 after Dead Space 2 of course, so it's nothing new but it's different when it comes to this particular chapter of the story itself. Was this the best possible choice though? There's an argument to be made here. The writing of the first Dead Space game was very, very laconic, very minimalistic, and that meant that every line of dialogue held a lot of weight and also there were much fewer missteps to be made if the writing was not good. If you don't have a lot of dialogue, you cannot mess up a lot of stuff. The writing, luckily, is very good, with very few exceptions, and Isaac comes across as the person he is supposed to portray perfectly. Great job from the actor, they retained the original voice and this time use the face as well. Which is a good idea, all things considered. I like old school Isaac, but maybe the person was unavailable or they just wanted to take it another route. Hammond was replaced, but the voice is close to the OG, so it won't make people who played the original feel uncomfortable with the chains and of course people who are playing this for the first time will actually be in for a treat when it comes to the voice acting. All the work done here is exceptional. Kendra is of particular note because uh, the actress really, really nailed what she was supposed to do. I'm not gonna go into any details because I don't want to spoil you. The overall scenario here is uh, true to the original, they optimize one aspect, one very important aspect of the overall history of Isaac, and they go deeper with his family background as well. So we see the reach of Unitology, the cult that is very prominent in the Dead Space universe, and how it affected his life in the first place when he was younger. All in all, I have to be completely adamant here. I do not like giving money to EA, guys. Call me bigot if you want, but uh, it is a company that is responsible for the destruction of many a studio and the death of countless very inspired 
projects. Just recently we learned that they probably cancelled a single player game set in the Titanfall universe and including many of Apex Legends characters. In case you don't know, Apex Legends takes place in the Titanfall universe. So EA is pretty much guaranteed to kill whichever studio or IP doesn't make them a lot of money. That being said, the product here, the product, the art piece here is so competent, so majestic in its creative vision that I cannot but recommend it, even if it is the only game you are able to afford right now. Completing two or three playthroughs of this game will net you anywhere from 30 to 45 hours according to how big of a completionist you are because there are secondary things to do this time around like the security access I mentioned before. It's more open and less linear than the OG and even if you are a person who played it back in the day, the refined nature of everything included in this package will draw you in once again and you will try to match the areas with what you remember and recognize the environments and bask in the glory of everything newly added. It is fantastic. So this has been selling well and if it's selling well now we're guaranteed that we're gonna get a sequel to this and we're also gonna get Dead Space eventually and listen to me on this Dead Space 3 was never the game the series deserved it is not a bad video game in my humble opinion but it is a very good game as an action-oriented atmospheric third-person shooter if you add to that the open space sections and the city of the ancients found there we have some great stuff to work with in Dead Space 3 if they recreate that with the focus we see here, it's going to be a treat for the senses. Can you imagine flying through open space or exploring the ancient city of those forgotten beings? Mm. Shudders! So, I highly recommend this. Hand to my heart. I try always to be as objective as possible. This is the title of the project as well, Honest Have Reviews. I hope you give it a chance. I really, really hope you enjoy it. It felt so good to finally get a day one product that was complete, bug free, optimized and whole. They didn't try to sell you half of the game as DLC. This is a work of honest labor, and honest labor should be rewarded. I hope the guys at Motive get all the attention they deserve because they knocked this out of the park. I hope we get solid news of the sequel soon. I hope you all get to try it and enjoy it. And I also hope you will be with us when we stream it and share it and discuss it live. This has been Dead Space Remake Honest AF Review by yours truly. Sub, like, share and hit the notification bell. And until next time, be well, stay frosty and always strive for perfection. Cheers!